Hi everyone, we're Sean and Julie Chickory, and we're here with Dennis, the CEO of Battleborn Batteries, and John and Brenda Najedlo of Geo Astro RV, and we're talking about off-grid living and about the benefits of lithium and solar power. So John and Brenda, can you first start by telling us what your current power setup is? Sure, we've, uh, we've actually got uh, 12 Battleborn batteries and uh, two uh, 3,000 watt Magnum uh, inverters um, and some, uh, let's see, what did I say? 1,300 watts of solar on the roof. Yep, and uh, some blue, uh, I think it's called Blue Sky uh, controllers. That is a fantastic power system, I must say. You guys are very comfortable off the grid. Uh, this is a very interesting time uh, to be off the grid. I'm actually at home right now. Uh, we're all doing our part to keep everybody in the community safe. Um, I just wanted to start off with, in these bizarre times, what's it like to be off grid from the context of social distancing? Well, I think for us, we've, we're used to being off grid. During the summer months, we spend maybe two, three months off grid at Theodore Roosevelt National Park. So for us, our setup allows us to be off grid during times such as these, but also normal times where we can go wherever we want and be off grid. And I can add to that, just saying that I really, this last week, I just really felt the need to want to go and explain to people that, you know, our setup, our, our power setup really is what, and the center of that Battleborn Batteries is really what allows us to do this. And it was so regular and it seemed so normal that as we watched, you know, Facebook with all the different messages back and forth, I just felt like, boy, people need to understand that you can be off grid on a regular basis. And, and what an opportunity to tell people that the way we live can be done pretty easily. Yeah, that's, I think that's a great point. It's like, you don't really have to change anything the way you're living. But you guys in particular, you you do some educational stuff. You've got you've got your telescope. You actually do see a lot of people. You see other RVers. Has has that changed in in light of uh, current times? As how you interact with people in general? Yeah, actually, we were over at Lake Mead, and we had scheduled three different astronomy presentations for the public over there. The first one was canceled due to weather, but then the virus. Uh, outbreak occurred and we actually did cancel the final two um, presentations that we were going to do and it's one of those things where that unless you're in our tribe right now you can wave to us from afar <laughs> we'll point to you know uh, geoastro.rv.com and say go look at that but other than that um, it was hard canceling those because we really, really enjoyed them, but it was the best. Do you guys monitor uh, your your power usage every day, or is it something you don't even think about? I well, I can answer this one. He <laughs> he knows all all the stuff about it, but I don't ever, ever think about it. We don't change how we use things, how we run things, what is plugged in, whether we're uh, off grid or plugged into shore power we don't ever have to worry about it. Yeah, that, we like to refer to that stress as battery anxiety, and that's what we like to alleviate. So, we do not have battery anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when, I'm just curious, um, what makes you decide after three days, like now it's time to, to recharge? What, what are you looking at? Is it voltage? Is it, do you have a capacity meter? Uh, we do have a um, uh, battery uh, percentage that I'm looking usually at. So normally we don't even have to think about that, that just by the time the sun comes up, if it's a normal day, you know, we're doing well, but um, let's just say we have clouds and I'm watching and if I get down to somewhere around 20%, I'm just that at that point in time, I'm thinking, okay, time to charge. Um, we find that, you know, turning the generator on when it's cloudy is a great way of just punching and charging quickly and getting it back up to a hundred percent if we need to. Uh, I'm curious you maybe you have a little bit more free time now what do you do for fun huh. um well first of all would be astronomy number one um but we also love geology john was a geology teacher so we'll drive around places and read about the geology of the area 
Um, we love hiking and biking. Yesterday we took a, I don't know, a couple mile ride around the desert here, uh, see what we can see. Um, unfortunately, the parks, national parks and state parks are closed now, but if those were open, those are things that we would also do. Museums, in fact, Julie and I have gone to a couple of museums together and had a good time. Great. Um, and what can you tell people is, I know you've already talked about, you don't worry about it or anything, but what's the best part about being off grid? What do you love about it? I would have to say the freedom to be wherever we want to be, pretty much whenever we want to be. Um, we don't have to worry about always going from park to park to get uh, shore power plugged in. Um, that is a great relief to know that we can go anywhere. We can actually set up our entire system in a parking lot at a local middle school or at a UU church or at someone's, you know, um, a business or so. And we do enjoy as we're traveling, uh, stopping and doing that as well. So the ability to be off grid, a lot of times you assume that, you know, you're in the middle of nowhere, but, you know, yeah. here we are, you know, that we can do it from a parking lot and people come in and look at our system and we have a blast, you know, because they ask, you know, how do you do this? And we love showing them how to do it. And uh, so our two questions for you. One is if people are interested in what you guys are doing with the astronomy stuff, how do they find you? And second, uh, given the situation this year, are you still planning on going up to Theodore Roosevelt for the summer? Yeah, for regarding Theodore, um, right now, I would say yes. We weren't going to be up there until August, so that's a very long time right now. Um, we've been in touch with the Rangers, and right now, they have not said anything is going to change. So as of right now, yes. Uh, to get a hold of us, geoastrorv.com. So G-E-O-A-S-T-R-O. Uh, rv.com and like I said we have a up in the corner of our uh, website you can actually request um, us to come and if you look at our itinerary we have an itinerary on one of the one of the I guess you'd say one of the pages of the website the itinerary if you look at it and you see we're coming your way request us and we will come and in, in, in the middle of nowhere with four or five of your friends and RVs and we'll put on some shows mm -hmm. or um, if you've got a request, and a lot of times we find this, you know, middle school or high school, once we perform somewhere there, they're calling ahead on our route to their friends and saying, you know, hey, you know, these, these people do everything for free and they enjoy it and they interact with the, with the kids and everything very well. Mm -hmm. So we really enjoy that. That's yeah. part of our, our route also is just, um, just enjoying it. And no power required. No exactly. power required. <laughs> we bring it all with us. <laughs> Well, thanks so much for joining us and talking about it. And uh, we, we look forward to checking out your telescopes one day. Every time Julie and I have been close to you, um, there's been weather, bad weather and we haven't been able to do it. So we're, we're looking at your route all the time to see where we're gonna intersect and uh, be able to join you guys for some sky watching. Thank you so much, John and Brenda, you guys are awesome.